we are going over um, some basic openings. A lot of them are openings that you probably don't see anymore. Um, but the first one that I do want to go over is one you see often, which is this one. Um, how many people still use this now? Um, is I've used it before. Yeah, just a just a regular star point, you know, a three four point, and then just a nice uh, small knight's enclosure. I mean, I I still use it today. Like, uh, I I've I used think, it in most of my games recently. <laughs> I think this is the most common one you would see compared to the other two openings that I was gonna go over today. Um, so I wanted to start with this one first. And in the past, um, what we would usually play is either A or B, and there was lots of uh, experimentation going on with this for a very long time. It was the early 1900s where people started using the star points, I think like 1920s or 30s. So, you know, this was like under, re you know, research for like almost 100 years. Um, and when the AI came out in 2016, uh, instead of using A and B, uh, the computer would just play here. And uh, once uh, the pros studied it and figured out why the computers play here, you don't see this really played often in pro games anymore, this little, just the small knight's enclosure. Um, of course, like I said, even now I still play this uh, once in a while and I see it all the time in my games, so it's not really affecting the amateur world, but Still, I wanted to show you this um, so you can have a, an AI advantage or a pro's advantage if somebody does this against you. First, um, white will start in the corner here. And then with black blocking, for, uh, we'll go over some of these, but let's just go over this first. Um, when white uh, pushes, if black plays one more, which is actually usually considered pretty bad, uh, white will push one more time, and then white will connect here. So the idea when we look at this board is white has a corner, and then black has built a very big moyo this way. So white has to find a way to break this moyo up. Um, you might say playing here. Um, this might be even something that I would do, like in this day, you know, and age. Um, but after studying what the AI does, I like this attachment. It makes black feels like uh, black has to respond, right? The golden rule of attachment is, you know, black had three, li four liberties, and now black has three, and then white has three. And so by pushing on white, uh, black is taking an advantage here. But once we do, if black comes back, which normally I see people play this, so I'll go over both, but if black comes back, um, then white can now make this nice large extension. And so when we examine it um, from this uh, position, uh, black spent a lot of moves to build a big wall. White got um, at least, I would say, close to 10 points um, from this exchange invasion. And then black now can't use this wall too effectively as long as white lives here. So white has kind of been torn, in, uh, sorry, black has been kind of torn into sunders, losing its corner and its potential. And then black has spent a lot of stones for a small area. So this is what um, the professionals call uh, over-concentrated, right? So they spent a lot of moves for very little, whereas white spent little moves for a lot. Um, so this would be very, very good for white. Um, it's considered very good for white uh, because black's plans just look in ruin and white and kind of got everything. Um, the one I'm most used to is this one. And so when we push on black here, once again, black is just over concentrated and white is able to make um, a base, which breaks, which makes this wall, um, you know, not as useful as it wants to be. Uh, and if black had to spend this many moves for a small amount of territory, it's once again considered over concentrated. Um, yeah, I mean, so I just wanted to show you that one. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. So what if? Well, so you so you said if um if black pushes after this move, it's like considered bad. So like, would you just tanuki from this? Yes. Yeah. So the normal um variations nowadays, once we do this uh, very common joseki, 
is to just leave it now. And so then black usually will play uh, an extension. Uh, nowadays, you see more of a four space extension because the computers are really good at breaking up a five space extension here. It's very hard for black to kill uh, white stone here. Um, and so, yeah, so usually you Tanuki here um, instead of playing this. Uh, you also see other Joseki where it goes like this and, you know, it'll continue on. But uh, for now, uh, just keep in mind that usually, yeah, you either Tanuki or you continue with this move. But you usually don't want to play here because this is just too solid for white and then it's too open for black. So it's very easy for white to break up this area. It's very interesting because I always extend and then I think I always get boned later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, if you do play this or if you play this, you know, then once white connects under here or plays under here, I know you're used to the rule of attachment, right? You only have two liberties. You don't want to get manipulated, right? Because then you can see white is out, right? Um, but this is just worse, right? Like if you end up just losing everything, like everything that you just made this wall for and you just lose it so easily, then it's not worth making that wall. That, that, I think that's the point of it. Um, so next we'll go into what if we Tanuki. So uh, before you try any of this, you know, mo modern breaking up this area, um, the pros in AI recommend playing the shoulder hit. Uh, the reason being is because when black pushes and you jump, we can see now that black is very concentrated on one side of the board. This is kind of a lot of protection for a very small area. And then we look at white. White is very three-dimensional, right? White it has much more potential than black, actually, in this case. Uh, along with taking a full corner. So, you know, with black only being on one side, white being three-dimensional, this is considered extremely good for white. Uh, you might not feel this way because this looks like it could be a lot of points, but it's, I would say it's a little hard to try and keep everything. And it's just on the fourth line, which, you know, if he has to play all these moves to, you know, try and keep everything, uh, it's really not as great as it looks uh the other goal too is when we look at these black stones black really wants to develop this side right if we had another stone here for black like now this moyo's like looking three-dimensional and very big so uh by pressing here it stops black's moyo from getting out of hand um, so michael so what's black's response after this after this <clears throat> um maybe i'd poke but even so, after black takes all this points here, um, white still once again has this nice uh, three-dimensional shape, which is really nice for white. Um, for me, I want to break the tiger's mouth, so that's when my first instinct comes. The other one is to um, push in here to create two weaknesses. Um, but even then, with this weakness, uh, white can very easily manipulate it and take a good position. So uh, my answer to your question is, it's kind of hard to find a good move for black. <laughs> uh, via, and it's because this uh, small knight's move gets pushed down so easily. Um, so that is why I'm teaching you this and why you don't see the pros or AI play the small knight's move. So the real uh, answer is uh, just not to play the small knight's move anymore. <laughs> Does that make sense, Marty? <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I play it virtually every game, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can still. But the, this is the reason I'm teaching, right? I'm showing you the holes in, in the, the weaknesses of this. So, um, yeah. Hey, Marty, try points, Flubber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, the next one you see commonly, instead of this move, you usually see this one. And then white usually knights moves. And then black once again can take. So the answer is exactly the same. And it looks pretty much the same anyway, right? So the answer would still be the same. Where and once you press here, it makes this a little over-concentrated. 
this isn't as good as it looks and then white is very three-dimensional with a full corner so um so that those are kind of the variations we have uh, at least from the book that um, i'm learning from these are the variations we have on the small knights move so uh, the key is to remember that if black really really cares about making a wall here then you take full advantage of making forcing him to make this wall and then you just de destroy all its potential with this this nice attachment and then if we go the other route where black um, got its extra stone and so this area is looking more and more secure then instead of invading inside and dealing with a, a fight that you might have a disadvantage at instead we work on the outside and just limit uh, uh, black's potential and this makes it quite easier for white to deal with so those are the two ways you can um, deal when uh, black plays this knight's move here um, so now they have this one which i almost never see i rarely ever see an open door uh, enclosure so this is like a closed door this is an open door but i rarely ever see the one jump here it is covered though so i'll go over it this as how should i put it this feels natural to me and this feels like it's very easy to understand but this one this sequence doesn't feel very natural to me i don't expect even myself to memorize this but um so what white does right away is attach here so normally you might look at this and like play here which is very very common um even for myself this is probably what i would play in a main game if i was playing in a tournament but um the ai uh showed us that this variation is uh apparently much more successful it only goes over one variation so i can't answer the question if black plays under here um unfortunately maybe maybe we would do something like this and it would get into a thing right something like this and this would be actually be really bad for black and then you might ask well what if he does this well we should know that uh the cross cuts it's not good to atari so this move is actually pretty bad because it opens up weaknesses here and it opens up a ladder here so something is gonna go bad for black um so i guess that does answer this but anyway in the book it covers this this uh sliding technique and you're gonna find these attachments usually come often with this like hane and then a counter hane to me I, I feel like it's like dancing or like sliding i don't know um it, that's not the right term for it but this is just how i feel about it um anyway black will connect white needs to break the tiger's mouth black ataris instead of guarding which once again this like this whole sequence feels a little unnatural to me but white pushes here and then pushes here and lets black get the panuki but then you also get a panuki and even when black plays this even if black takes a stone technically you can still live in this corner so then instead of um guarding this or fighting the ko uh white ends up playing here to then break up this area so uh when we see in all these sequences usually the computer goes for a corner first and then breaks up the whatever black is built after white gets the corner and that's in all of these sequences um that one once again i don't expect you to memorize feel free to uh go through the video this is recorded so it'll be on youtube eventually and uh you can study it if you want but i really just don't see almost anybody play this uh this high enclosure right i see this a lot but not this and finally, uh, what I do see often is these large knight moves. So um, because of the AI stating or showing us that these small knights enclosures aren't that good, then a lot of people started playing the large knight enclosures. Um, and I remember hearing that, uh, like Go Sagan, uh, one of a very famous uh, Japanese player, I think from 1930 and 40, he, he would play... Um, like the star points and people thought he was crazy and he would go for big moyos and stuff but um i think he also said like back like almost 100 years ago that you know this is too small and we should be playing this so 
Um, yeah, I like hearing the references that a lot of AI books like talk about. Like Go Sagan was like way ahead of his time. Um, but anyway, so uh, he played the large knight's move. And so now instead of playing for the corner, uh, white immediately plays between these stones. And if black answers with this, then white then um, continues to, I mean, starts to harass this group by attaching. And you see these attachments, right? And the other variations we attached here, um, but we see these attachments all the time, um, which is, uh, it's, it's very different than what we used to play. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows this, right? Uh, let's see. Everyone knows this uh, this uh, old Joseki, right? And so none of our stones are touching and everything's nice. Uh, we have these nice bubbles. And so the, this was the style we played for so, such a long time. Um, but once the computers came, they just kept attaching and punching people in the face. Um, and <laughs> it erases these bubbles and adds points to your score. So anyway, I just wanted to um, bring up how important and how often you'll see these attachments in the Joseki. So um, we attach here and then black um, plays under and then white does this, this dancing move again, right? It's a Hane and then a, a another Hane. Um, so this is another thing that you'll get used to uh, by trying it a lot. Uh, it's it's not very natural to me at first. Like for me, I'd like want to break the tiger's mouth or jump out, right? Or or maybe make a mess, which isn't good, right? Um, but yeah, the, the these uh, counter hanes or dancing hanes uh, come up so often. So anyway, black um, will atari attach. Now there's a big weakness here, so black needs to address it. Push. Um, we make nice tiger's mouths. We push, push. We create a sleeper agent. So um, this is a, a much higher level. Uh, this is definitely like how the dons and like and pros play, uh, where they make a move that's clearly dead, but it's used later as like a sleeper agent, right? Like if we ever get into a co, this is like at least like three co's if not even if not even more right so um they put they make this weakness here even though it's very clearly dead um but they put it there for later use and then finally we end it here so we can see that white um has built up a very big area um and has kind of pushed black down now admittedly to me this looks like pretty good territory for black but when we look at the original start of the game, um, Black was goal was to build up influence so that they could he could make a big moyo this way, right? This is what this this influence is for. But by the end of it, after the uh, variation, uh, Black's plans were thwarted, and White took over everything that Black was trying to build. So now technically he has one wall and another wall and he can't develop from these walls because white has destroyed it um so to finish everything off if you ever watch any more recent um videos or recent pro matches they almost always play this extension now if they play a three four instead of playing here or here or here they play this um and those are the reasons why because each time these stones can get over concentrated pretty easily or pressed down right and so um yeah and so that's why you'll see them play high <laughs> instead of low now uh any questions or you want me to review anything or any thoughts on this stuff i um sometimes if playing against higher level players i'll play against I'll play um, actually the diagonal instead of anything else. So like this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is this is uh, it's very slow, right? Um, yeah. So it can be pushed down, or like it might not even be worth answering, right? It might just better go somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is a little slow. Um, if this is slow, yeah, this is definitely a little slow. <laughs> um. Okay. Um, 
Any other? Anyone else? Was this good? The, it it this? was. Yep. Okay. I'm hoping like, this will help. What book is this coming from? Uh, the one that you like, Marty. Uh, the Fuseki Revolution. Ah, thank I you. I think it's like the, you know, it's not far. Maybe like 15 pages in or 20 pages in. Mm -hmm. um, but you can review it if uh, you get it. It's the Fuseki Revolution, How AI Has Changed Go. Look um, that up on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. It's a, really, it's a fun book, especially if, like, you know, whether or not you've been playing for a long time or not, it's interesting to see the older uh, openings getting, like, destroyed by the AI. Uh, I've been playing for a long time, so, like, these are all openings I've seen and, like, used myself um so it's very fun uh so next i'll move on to the next one so we're gonna look at the mic uh mini chinese so i don't know if you've seen anyone use this i asked terry and uh terry would you say have have you never seen it or uh well not i think i've seen it but i i haven't seen it played against me often and um it's not anything that i ever studied Okay, yeah. When uh, when Boston was happening uh, way before COVID and people were coming together once a week for uh, lessons, we went over this uh, very thoroughly in our class, in the single digit Q class, and people were playing it like nonstop. And even at, I think, I don't know when it started to reach its popularity, but I know that between at least 2014 and 2016, this was the most played opening for the professionals at the time until the computer came. Once the computer came, it destroyed this and I just never seen it again. Until the other week, I played Milan and uh, he decided to play it against me. And even back then when I w did study it, like I, didn't, I wasn't a good student apparently, so I didn't really study it as much and I always had a lot of trouble against it. Um, fortunately, this reminded me of the Chinese opening, so then I attached here, which was actually the correct move. Um, but anyway, the, me playing against Milan Sunday uh, inspired me to want to look up like how AI has changed this opening, and so uh, that's what started this lesson. But yeah, the, this uh, this was played against me many many times um, in the you know uh, mid two thousands. Uh, even even when I joined the Osaka school in 2020, yeah, 2020, uh, some people were playing this against me and I was having some trouble. But anyway, in the past, we used to play this move. So when we look here, uh, clearly Black is building an influence that wants to develop this way. Um, and so we would play in the middle here to break up that influence. But when Black plays this and we make a two-space space, once black plays here, uh, black can continue to kind of attack these stones and build a very large bottom area and then even builds, you know, some on the top. So it was like black was building two um, sides at once. And I hated playing against this. And there was like very long strings of uh, variations. Like you could learn the first like 30, 40 moves from the starting from this point. Um, but now... Um, as I showed you in my game against Milan, uh, the trick that just destroys this opening uh, where the AI just breaks it easily is this attachment right here. Um, so uh, how would you find this? I don't know. <laughs> so that's why uh, I was happy to study it um, and learn how it works. Uh, so we have three like main um, positions where black would want to answer, right? Black has uh, just got attached to, and so lost to Liberty. And then White also has three Liberties. Um, and so Black wants to usually counterattack. So if we counterattack, uh, who wants to guess the next move? I, I'm actually curious. <clears throat> um, well, uh, it seems like R5 makes some sense because uh, you know, we've been looking at that counter Hane. Yeah, yep. That's right, Terry. Good job. Um, so even if you don't memorize what I what I teach you here today, maybe, just maybe, you'll remember this dancing Hane, which will give you the start 
of um you know all these techniques every single one that i show today but yes um so that is correct terry um so let's go over the variations first so first you know if black atari is here this seems very natural to me there's a big weakness so black has to fix white ha gets a nice push right there's only two liberties and then um white now gets to make himself a base and so when we look here black's plans were thwarted right black made a big influence wanting to develop this uh right side but now white has a very very strong position here i don't think this is going to be killed very easily and so white has succeeded in not only pressing down black but also um, breaking up this side and when we look each one of these stones is very low so this isn't going to develop into a, an immense amount of points it's going to be very hard to um, make it into a big area and so just with this one attachment and the dancing hane now you uh, have destroyed black's whole plan right and we can see the difference between you know what we used to play right this looks pretty developable and nice and same with this and then white looks a little in danger um and then we compare it to what we just saw i mean white's in no danger and black can't develop nice and so this just totally this move this attachment has destroyed <clears throat> this opening so now uh let's look at the other way so if <laughs> i could ask but i'm assuming you you all know now the dancing hane comes into play um so if black just uh fixes its weakness and white fixes its weakness white really can't be killed here now this is a, a very dug in area where it has two ways to go i mean if black plays like this white can just live easily even if white has to play something like this white's still gonna live pretty easily and pretty much the same thing right like white's perfectly fine and so now with white even being fine these two stones are actually quite in a lot of danger and then um white succeeded right in uh reducing this area yes black can still develop on this side but um you know as you know in go the this game is kind of a yin yang thing right even in this variation you know black still developed one side and then white took some of the other so in both variations black's gonna get one side but at least black's not gonna get both and so the, this is why this is really nice so remembering the dancing hane is the key to these like attachments um finally we can see if black just gets stronger instead of counter attacking uh white pushes to the corner and then white can make a base and although this looks pretty cramped it still should be okay for white to be able to live um white has these nice under attachments and you know um something like this you know white can make a, a ko or an eye shape even white can get out like this right because black can't cut right and so white is a very very versatile uh even if it is cramped which once again is just the succession of uh reducing this area where black was trying to develop and these stones actually become a lot weaker so if they make a move to protect themselves then white can actually just tanuki um if you don't feel comfortable you could jump one more time but uh, yeah you can you can still tanuki here and still be okay i believe <laughs> um so that is the mini chinese now some people would play the micro chinese um so this is just one move more um and so we just want to go over the some of the variations here oh yeah so the concern the dancing hane works for both of these as well so the concern would be this one because last time we made a two space space but here we can't make a two space space because this is so close so instead when white comes down white makes this nice what's called the scorpion shape you can see the two pincers in the body 
Uh, this is a very good shape to know um, because it gets you out of a lot of trouble often. Uh, in this case, when black um, takes this stone or Atari's it, you can play here. And even if um, black takes it, which in the book, uh, white, black protects itself, um, you know, then white plays here and we move on. Um, but even if black takes this, um, this connection, uh, you know, just works, right? There's, there's no way for um, black to disconnect white here. And so white can continue to come out. Um, and that's really it um, for this. I don't think this one as as helpful as Terry said doesn't see it often has anybody ever faced this opening before I don't think I've ever faced either opening uh, Ben Adam J block <laughs> Marty this is a I don't see yeah I don't see a lot of three four I never play three four point I should probably give it a whirl but uh in the games that I've played I um don't come up against three four that often once mm. I play Marty okay oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right well all opponents... i'm sure if i were to play higher level games then i would probably see it more mm. yeah I mean, maybe this... not the chinese but the three four at least this was definitely um like a, a single digit q to like high don opening back in the day so i figured this one wouldn't be as useful as um as this one but i would assume that you see this one quite often um but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but I, I definitely see this one a, a lot, right? We have a 3-4 point and we want to enclose it, right? That's usually our first instinct. Um, so this one I wanted to definitely show off and hope that in hopes that it would be useful. Um, all right. So then my last piece, which, you know, if your brain's busted and you don't want me to go over it, it's fine. But my last piece I was going to look at the Chinese. Um, does anybody run into this opening? I was playing it myself for quite a long time before I, I switched to Point Slover. Okay. I always play this opening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I guess I'll recap it and uh, we'll, so that way if you run into it or if you use it, you, you know the dangers. Um, so right away, um, I was going to ask, can anyone find the move? <laughs> anyone oh. want to take a guess for White's next move? Um, you mean to th specifically to thwart the Chinese? Um, Q4 is the move, but I think it's a little early for it, isn't it? Yes. Um, so you actually can play it outright if you want. So there's two ways. You can play here first, or you can play this outright. And I can show you both, um, but I think you got this, Terry. <laughs> um, I, I, I think I could give you control, and you'd probably know what to do at this point. <laughs> well, probably not, actually. <laughs> I just know the first move. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's very, very similar um, to what we just saw. So the idea is that there's this lone stone um, that is on the 3-4 point, and black made a big extension, right? And in the other part, uh, black was here and white, um, and black was here. So very similar, right? That's why they were called the Chinese opening, and this one was called the mini Chinese opening. Um, but this weakness still is here, and so when black um, hanes, then white can do the dancing hane. I'm I'm coining that now. That's what I'm calling it. Um, <laughs> but essentially, it's just a counter hane, right? Hane and then counter hane, but. The dancing honey um so when black ataris you can easily just connect that's not all these moves feel very natural to me in comparison to some of the other things that one other thing i showed you but i think everybody in this room would uh connect if they were atari so to me this is very natural right um so here's a huge weakness that needs to be addressed we can push this this is a big weakness right if black played anywhere else this wouldn't be good for for black um so black shouldn't push and then uh white can make a nice little base and so uh right now black is focused on one side and white has a nice three-dimensional shape now of course black can get that three-dimensional shape but still 
uh, this is considered very nice for white because in the past we would play something like this and then we would get attacked and this feels like very uncomfortable um i mean i don't know how you feel about it but i'd feel a little uncomfortable if like black's building here and black's building here so um you know the, this this is the new the new hotness right this is the old one the new one <laughs> um so uh, and we can see that, like I showed you, white was very cramped in that little area, whereas in this one, um, you know, white had a very big area to play, right? Like this feels, I don't feel cramped whatsoever here with white, so this is much more uh, appealing to me. Um, so now we can look at this one. Uh, so once again, we want to use the dancing Hane. And in the book, usually black plays something like this, and then white will play something like this, and this, and this. And you can clearly see that white is alive here. Uh, even if black pushes down, uh, white's still alive here. So uh, it's a very nice shape for white. Now, actually, uh, we, I guess we can go over these. You know, you'll probably, at your level, you'll see these, right? All the time. You'll see that they'll Atari. Uh, a stone a cross cut so like here's the the four cross cut and here's the Atari and I want you sometimes it's good if you have a lot of strength everywhere then you know maybe you can get away with this but you know I would say like seven or eight times out of ten this is a very bad shape and to prove it uh, after this variation I'll show you in the game that I played in the Osaka school where the same kind of principle happened and it was like terrible for him um so uh white comes out and then what does black do right i'm assuming black will take try and take this stone but once you play it white has this nice ladder and so this is a very good position for white and kind of a very small and crappy position for black right like then i i Feel, I hope that you would feel bad if this ends up happening to you, if you were black. Um, so, yeah, we can see that uh, whenever people Atari in the cross cuts, here's the cross cut, here's the Atari, all it does is make you stronger if you're the defensive player, and then it makes black weaker, right? Black has a weakness here, and black has a weakness here. Black fixes this one, then you have the ladder this way. If black fixes this one then you have the ladder this way so these these atars are bad and they're not covered in the books at all they just then that's why you see these moves so if you had any question on why you keep seeing this instead of the ataris that's why in all these formations that we looked at today um all right is anyone guilty of doing these ataris in the cross cuts well, I try not to, <clears throat> uh, because, well, you know, when it happens with an attachment, like in the, the middle of a side, uh, I know I'm supposed to have both ladders in order to do it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I kind of shy away from it because I'm not sure about the ladders. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's a very good point, Terry. So I did say there's sometimes when it's okay to do it, right? When it's good to do it. And that's right, when the ladders are okay. So, you know, you know when you Atari Atari, white's always gonna extend, right? And so it creates ladders on both sides. So what you have to do is read through the extensions and then find the ladder. In this case, the ladder would be here, right? Um, actually here, I'm sorry. But uh, uh, yeah, so you just have to do a little bit of reading, but Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, even I've been guilty of this, and I see it all the time. Uh, I figured everybody in this room would have said they were guilty of it, but that's okay. It's okay to be shy. Um, so... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, now, uh, uh, Terry, you said this is early. Uh, yeah, that, well, <clears throat> Insung has a lecture on... The Chinese opening called Chinese opening again, uh, which uh, shows um, how you can play the Chinese opening again now. Uh, and he starts uh, for white at this move. He would play 
017 first. Um, and uh, then a little later, he would uh, come with the uh, Q4 move. No, I mean for white. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so um, that's the next uh, variation I'll go over. Now, I haven't seen that lecture that you're talking about, so maybe it even goes further than w what this book does. Um, but yeah, I can at least teach you how the book goes. So yes, you are correct. Uh, white uh, can play here. So if you want this early breakup, you can do it and it's perfectly fine. But if you want to uh, go further with it, you can start the traditional way. This was the traditional way of playing. We would play something like this and then, you know, we would probably do some one of these and then black would play over here. Uh, and then white would play something like this or this or this or this. And so this was the very traditional way of playing um, the Chinese. The updated version is now with this, um, this update. So we didn't have this move before until the AI created it. But instead of playing this, which, you know, you, you never see the pros or AI play it, um, they now play this against the high enclosure, right? Like this is the low the high this is the closed door this is the open door so if they play the open door we poke it and then we play under and so now if black has to play here this is very painful it's like very very small and sad um and so black doesn't play here black just leaves it alone which later means white can take the full corner with um and which makes this poke really nice and so that's the combo that uh the computer created but now black will play this and then black will play here and so now we come to the same situation so even now like with the micro chinese the move was here and then black was here but in this case it's like this uh, but even now, this attachment is the right move. And so this is what breaks up the area. So everything that we learned is pretty much the same. Um, you can see. We can still make a nice two space space. Uh, we can't make a three space space, but this is still good enough. And if black starts poking to attack, we can see that um, black now has some weaknesses. Black has a stone that's way too close to this, so it's very over-concentrated. If we wanted an ideal position for black, maybe we would want a, like a stone here or something to get more points. But with the stone being low, it just looks like a useless stone. You wouldn't, I don't think that like if you, the, the board looked like this, you would play here now. Like this doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense to play something like that. So. That means that the stone is in a bad position for no reason. And um, yeah, so white kind of just wins by reducing this area significantly and then making black look a little silly. And we can still see that white has that nice three-dimensional shape, uh, whereas black is very concentrated um, and very small here. So it all starts with the attachment and then the dancing hane. Oops. So uh, this is the key. So then the other way, if black wants the inside, the corner more, we can dance on the outside. This is the same thing, actually, isn't it? Um, so it'd be this way. <laughs> um, so same thing. Um, remember not to attire in the cross cut. And so then white, it just is allowed to live. This is a living shape in the corner here. Um, and once again, if it went like this, um, you know, it just feels that white has succeeded in reducing this area significantly. Um, and there's a lot of openings here still. And then black looks a little silly, right? Black, sh black, sh if black wanted to play somewhere next, black would probably want to play here to cramp white. Black wouldn't want to give white a, a large opening to come out of. So does black block? I mean, because then white can come in here and destroy this whole, this area. But anyway, uh, so the key to this lecture, I think, is definitely the power of this uh, dancing Hane and kind of playing loosely, right? Like this would be heavy and uh, 
this would be uh, what would you call it an overplay but this one is a, a really nice like loose way of like you know uh, playing that's <laughs> that's all I can really say so we covered uh, three openings um, and I hope this helps um, I don't know how much it will but I really wanted to teach this because it's actually just kind of a big interest to me <clears throat> um, but also I felt like this one in particular would help quite a lot in your yeah games. I, I like that because I see that and I always go in at A and I know that I'm getting small and cramped and it's really nice to know that I should be going in at the 3-3 and what I can do afterwards. Mm, yeah, yeah, These this follow-up of uh, taking a full corner and then uh, being able to um, make black like over-concentrated is very nice. Um, my favorite, obviously, is uh, this one. But uh, you won't see many players play this way unless you're facing Joyer, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all day. So, so you put this lecture together to reform him, huh? Yeah, always. It's a it's <laughs> from <Literally>, the start. <laughs> literally in my game with Carlos yesterday, I did this exact extension. So, <laughs> and then he was um, able uh, to break up this area. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yep, yep, yep. You know, that's how it I is. I know his secrets now. <laughs> Michael. Yep. You know, in the lower left corner, if white has a knight's extension, you've had it before up to, yeah, no, other way. Can you talk about the black move coming at D2 or E2? Okay, sure. Down, down one more down. Oh, or, or if that, oh, I right, don't know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I can talk about this. Um, so I, I can give you the basics. Um, so if white cares more about uh, this outside area, so let's say, you know, um, I guess white has a stone here, here, and here, then uh, white would play this move against this black move. So if we go back and it, you know, uh, you know, black, uh, white had this, and then black played here, then white would want to play this move here. Because it's more focused on the outside. Now, uh, so if you care about the outside, then this is a nice move. Uh, black will jump into the corner, and then you know, as white, you know, what do we do here? We can see that black is probably gonna be able to live and make a, a nice uh, little area here. It's not, it's gonna be. It could get a little messy, but uh, black should be able to live in here don't usually see white answer this way. Usually I see it answer that way, but either way, black should be able to make a living group in here by jumping into the 3-3. Maybe it pushes once and then jumps. Uh, that sound, that looks more right to me. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's the first answer. But the one that you'll see most often, right? Because this isn't a good move if black has like a, a group out here or something because white can't make a lot of points here. Um, so the one you'll see more often is white usually attaches here. It can get messy if you play this. So if you want to play simply, usually I play simply myself. I just play here. And then you can make a nice little two space base. And so white has uh, got pushed down. And so it's gotten a nice corner, but it was its corner in the start, right? Originally it had two stones versus the one. So it should get a good position. But black also gets a nice position if this needed to be broken up. So instead of you, let's say, um, uh, the, I'm sure you're asking this because let's say it was like this, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to play here, right, Marty? Because right, then you'd right, get right, kicked. Right, right, exactly. And this feels bad, right? Because now you're already cramped. So instead, you could play this. And now you can see how useful this can be where now it's separating the stone and even if like white lives or white has no problem living uh black also got like a, a little nice group out of this so um so yeah that's uh that's the first part of it uh this can get really messy and i haven't studied it in a long time so i can't give you all the details on why uh black would be 
good here. I would, if it was a real game, I would have to do a lot of reading. Yeah. Um, which is fine. I mean, let's go, right? Like your go. Maybe. <laughs> maybe Black would be okay uh, with this or something, but it looks a little cramped. But anyway, to keep things simple, I just break the tiger's mouth and then I make a little base. Um, this this move uh very similar right we could see that black can um make something like this with a large knight's move coming out um so i want to say same here because if white has to play something like that then you can make another almost like two space space yeah um and this attachment very similar to what we saw um in the first lecture i showed you where here's the here's like a almost like a knight's move and then we oh. attach to it right so if we attach why isn't that white That's weird. uh if we attach to it same thing right so uh this move would also be in that same vein Suppose that suppose white Hane is on the outside. Then what happens? Um. So then, maybe we can use what we just learned. Um. Let's see. <laughs> so, if black, I mean, if white has to play here, this isn't good. If white Ataris have some ladder potential but not really mm, let's see it's gonna be a, a good reason i'll find it <laughs> well then this 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 won't be playing anytime soon yeah the, this uh atari looks bad for white because now white has some weakness here and here so uh, if white addresses any of this, right, black should be able to get a, a kill here and live in the corner. Um, same with this or this. Um, now black would be able to come out with a kill. So maybe this is the right. So first I tried this one, but after, you know, reading out, it looks bad. So instead I'd play this dancing Hane. And this one actually looks good, but does look a little scary but not really actually looks like black uh, uh should have a pretty okay time here maybe something like this this looks like oops yeah yeah, yeah. this this is fine that's two eyes this is two eyes you caught me on a loop, Marty, but I think I oh. solved it. I think I solved it okay. with this all right. one. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I, I don't mind these questions. But I think, uh, it, can anybody find the weakness for this? I think we're good. Maybe that one. That looks pretty dangerous. Yeah, that looks yeah. Pre that looks pretty dangerous. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I'll have to look up this one for you, Marty. But I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. But if anything, these two, I hope they helped out. Um, yeah. This one I use pretty often, and this one I don't really use often. But you can, All right? You can get out pretty easily, or you can just live. I think. Um, with this okay um well i'll leave it at that unless anyone else has any questions or anything i will yes, thank you great lecture i will say if you want to test these um out you can challenge me to a correspondence game or challenge each other and i think the one that i'd practice is this one because i think this would be the most useful one for you so Feel free uh, to challenge me in a correspondence game um, and just make me black 
and so that way I'll start with this opening. Okay. Yeah, nice. thanks. This was awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, no Thank problem. you. I can stick around if you need any reviews or anything.